What's up, folks? I'm Chris, your MLB writer here at Occupy Fantasy, here with a look at the 12 game main slate for MLB DFS tonight on Tuesday, June 7th, FanDuel, DraftKings, and Yahoo. As always, we like to start by looking at the starting pitching that is available to us on every single slate, and there's a lot of good options tonight, uh, especially at the top of the salary table. Same guys are at the top of our model. Number one for us is Justin Verlander tonight against the Seattle Mariners. Actually got beat up pretty good by the Mariners last time out. Uh, so that may be something that causes people to not play him tonight. I don't know. I think that would be kind of foolish. Just 6.3 fantasy points against the Mariners on May 27th. Uh, gave up quite a few home runs in that matchup, but this is a division rivalry. Those things tend to happen from time to time. Verlander with a really strong upside as far as length of outing. He actually pitches well into the seventh inning on average. He's got 64 and two-thirds innings pitched and 10 starts so far this year. I think that gives him a little more upside than a lot of the other guys on this slate tonight because we just don't see pitchers doing that that often in Major League Baseball anymore. Um, strikeout stuff, not as strong as it once was in his younger days, but still averaging close to about a strikeout per inning. Mariners line strikes out slightly above average, performing slightly below average in the fantasy point department over the last month. Verlander, really strong, 16.90 off index by far. Well, not by far, but the number one option in our model tonight at 10,600 on DraftKings, 10,900 over on FanDuel. Now, these next three guys, Alec Manoa, Carlos Rodon with the Giants, Kyle Wright with the Braves. I think Kyle Wright is my favorite of this four, of these three, excuse me, uh, second favorite of the top four, because of the matchup with Oakland. Oakland has the second least DraftKings points per plate appearance over the last 30 days. Wright with the second highest Strikeout per inning pitch projection in our model at 1.17 tonight. Second biggest favorite on the slate. Line movement in his favor. Kyle Wright probably makes a lot of sense against the Oakland Athletics tonight. Batted ball exit velocity, a little scary, but the batted ball distance, not so far. So that tells me he's probably giving up a lot of hard ground balls. Uh, Kyle Wright is definitely an interesting play against the Oakland Athletics tonight. Alec Manoa against the Royals and Carlos Rodon against the Colorado Rockies at home. Um, in San Francisco are two of the higher price options that probably get squeezed a little bit by ownership unless people feel like they can't afford Verlander on DraftKings and they come down to one of these two guys here. I do think that Manoa has the slightly better matchup here. Um, the Royals are a slightly below average fantasy point production offense right around average in terms of how often they strike out. For Radon, it's the same thing, um, roughly. Slightly below average in the strikeout department are the Rockies and the Rockies are slightly above average in finish point production but uh this could be a, a little bit of a tougher spot for him than any of these other guys near the top of our model now we like Tariq Skubal against the Pirates he's $9,800 which makes this a little hard to stomach in my opinion tonight uh only a slight favorite just under a strikeout per inning pitched projected um he does have you know strikeout upside he's facing the Pirates who aren't by any stretch a difficult club to pitch against right now. I actually think uh, my lean is the other side of that matchup tonight. Jose Quintana with the Pirates facing the Tigers. The Tigers are averaging the least amount of fantasy points per plate appearance as a club over the last 30 days. So I think Quintana actually has the better matchup. He just has less strikeout upside. We have him for about 0.81 tonight. Averaging 0.95 over his last year's worth of outings. And Detroit strikes out at a decently above average clip. So I think Quintana might be a little underrated by our model tonight. And if you're looking for one of these secondary pitchers on a place like DraftKings or Yahoo, that is a little bit more affordable. Quintana may be one of the guys that you look at. Now, another one that I think is interesting tonight that ranks really low right now because we don't have a money line status in, it's Garrett Whitlock with the Boston Red Sox. See if I sort our model by the projected strikeouts per inning. He's at the very top. He's just $6,900 on DraftKings. I wouldn't go there on FanDuel. I would stick to the expensive plays. But as a secondary starting pitcher with some value, Garrett Whitlock may be interesting tonight. Look at what Whitlock has done recently. Um, the strikeout stuff has sort of dropped off a little bit, which is slightly concerning. Uh, six inning outing against the Reds last time out. Uh, no strikeouts, just 70 pitches. You see that his uh, cap is definitely in this 70 to 85 roughly pitch mark as a starter for the Red Sox. And the strikeout stuff has been a little light recently. So that would be the only concern here. The caveat to that is the Angel strikeout against right-handed pitching, which Whitlock is, at an extremely above average rate. So maybe he gets back to his old ways with the strikeout stuff tonight in this matchup against Los Angeles. Who are we targeting with stacks? We like to start by looking at who ranks the bottom of our model. This is a little dicey for this video this morning because we don't have a money line status for a couple of the games tonight. 
Reed Detmers here at the bottom, I do think will still be a target, the lefty facing the Red Sox, because he has uh, some pretty poor splits, uh, isolated slugging-wise, against hitters from both sides of the plate, and the Red Sox are hitting pretty well right now. Cole Sands and Jameson Tyone in this Yankees and Twins game. I think we're going to have to revisit this. I'm not sure they'll be down here near the bottom once a money line comes in for this game. I actually think Tyone may be someone that ranks near the top of the model. Chris Flexen with the Mariners facing the Houston Astros. I do think this is a spot to target uh, with bats tonight. I like the Astros a lot. Flexen, a fairly decent 215, plus 215 money line underdog. Doesn't strike out hitters at a very high clip at all. And he gives up hard batted balls and far batted balls. So we actually think Flexen is someone worth targeting. Someone that we've talked about quite a bit in our videos. He's not necessarily one of the pitchers that we're all in on targeting tonight, but he's averaging the four, he's allowing the 14th hardest average batted ball exit velocity out of any pitcher in Major League Baseball over the last two weeks. It's right-handed starting pitcher Kyle Bradish with the Baltimore Orioles. So I do think Cubs hitters in tournaments might be interesting tonight. Now let's see what our stacks dashboard thinks though before we go any further. Astros number one. Red Sox number two, Atlanta Braves number three, all by OF Index. Now, I did use our lineup builder at OccupyFantasy.com, and I found that these are the three teams that it wants to use in primary stacks almost exclusively. So I don't think we have to get too crazy tonight. That said, there's a couple of places to look elsewhere. The Phillies with the number one weighted on base average projection in our model tonight. The Cubs against Bradish. The number five weighted on base average projection. We find weighted on base average correlates a bit more than any of these other metrics with fantasy point production. So the Phillies and the Cubs may be interesting spots tonight. The Phillies are facing Jason Alexander with the Milwaukee Brewers is what we expect. And he's only made one start. He went seven innings. And so there's just not a lot, a ton of data there to go off of. Uh, you see the bat of ball data is really good. But I think we just we haven't seen enough to trust how we feel about Alexander. Model likes the potential floor, though, here in this matchup, which is kind of interesting. For the Astros, I think what makes them pretty intriguing as a top stack is the pricing on a couple of these plays. Jason Castro at catcher, if that's who we get, is the minimum price over on FanDuel, just $2,600 over on DraftKings. We've got Jose Siri as a pretty cheap outfield option, one of the lower-ranked hitters in this stack, but I wouldn't sleep on him in this matchup. Uh, again, facing Chris Flexion... Facing Chris Flexen of the Mariners, Siri with a 350-ish weighted on base average against right-handed pitching uh, over the last year of his plate appearances, so could perform a little better than we are expecting tonight. All of these guys at the top of the model for the Astros hit right-handed pitching very well. Pretty good formula for success potentially for them against Flexen. The Boston Red Sox facing left-handed Reed Detmers, number two stack in our model. Trevor Story is by far the number one hitter against lefties in this lineup. That's why he's by far the number one hitter ranked in this stack. I do think it makes sense to include him in Boston lineups, maybe even as a one-off play, if you choose to go that route tonight. Enrique Hernandez, Kike Hernandez, the other hitter in this lineup that's extremely strong against left-handed pitching recently. And Bobby Dahlbeck hits lefties a lot better than he hits righties. So as a cheap first base play, he's certainly interesting in this stack alongside usual suspects like Martinez and Bogarts. With the Cubs against Bradish, the kind of off-the-beaten-path stack, I think, makes a little bit of sense tonight. Patrick Wisdom is their best all-around hitter against right-handed pitching, but Rafael Ortega has the best weighted on base average against righties over the last year of his plate appearances. So those are a couple of guys I would want to make sure that I get into my lineups if I'm playing the Cubs against Bradish tonight. Now over on DraftKings, I have already started to build a lineup. I actually think I am going to go for the Astros here. I like Verlander for all the reasons we've discussed. I like these five Astros hitters, especially with the cheap catcher, if that's who we get tonight. Leaves us 4,100 per player remaining. And if we try to play one of these other expensive pitchers, you know, like Rodone, Wright, or Manoa, let's just plug in Manoa because he's cheaper. Just 2133 per player it means we'd have to plug in a couple of min-price hitters in here just to finish a lineup. That may be difficult tonight, and that's why... You may see people focus on this mid-range for a secondary starting pitcher option. So for me personally, I think I'd be considering Jose Quintana here. Uh, gets our remaining salary for our final three hitters up to a decent amount. Or even all the way down to Whitlock against the Angels. Like I said, I think his ranking is going to go up a little bit because of the potential strikeout upside against the Angels once we have a money line status there. So Whitlock gives us 31.66 per player remaining here. That'd be kind of interesting if this is the route juice to go. Over on FanDuel, I have Verlander, four high upside Astros bats, including that min-price Jason Castro. 
thing to be careful of over here on FanDuel we talk about from time to time. They do require you to roster a player from a minimum of three different Major League Baseball teams. So you will need, at minimum, like a three-man stack and then a one-off hitter if you choose to play the slate this way. Lots of things to consider on a 12-game slate like this. Our Occupy Fantasy article about the slate, the plug, will be updated on our website by about 5.30 p.m. Eastern Standard Time. If you want to talk about MLB DFS up until then, you consider joining our Discord. There's a link to do so below the description of every video that we post on this channel. Thanks for watching, and as always, we will talk to you soon for more MLB DFS.